too many advisors out there, especially people doing it themselves, manage the money the same, whether it's in an IRA or a taxable account, and that's really not a great idea in my opinion. Hello, this is Mark Silverman, managing member and founder of Silverman & Associates, and I'm also a certified financial planner professional. I wanna welcome you to the Saving with Silverman podcast. I'm glad you're here. Each week we'll discuss different financial planning topics because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. Mark, let's talk about tax consequences. Different types of accounts have different tax consequences. And I thought today we could talk about those advantages and disadvantages in different types of accounts and how you use them or don't use them in your retirement planning. First of all, what about tax deferred accounts like 401ks and IRAs? Yeah, and those would apply to also SEP IRAs, TSAs, 403Bs, any of those type of accounts would be in the same category. But basically how they work is whether you have one yourself or you have one through your employer, you put money in and you get a deduction. So if you put, you know, let's say $5,000 in, you get 5,000, it's pre-tax that goes in. That account grows tax deferred. So you're not paying taxes on it as it's growing. However, you are required, and now that law has changed at age 72, and that could change again, but the numbers, the age is 72 now, you will need to take what's known as a required minimum distribution. So the government will tell you, based on the value of the account, your age, how much you have to take out each year from that year forward. And you have to pay taxes on that money. That's why the government's forcing you to do that, because you have to pay taxes on it. And they don't care if you're in a high tax bracket or not at that point. You have to take that dollar amount out. And you, you could take more, but you can't take less. So very common. A lot of people who have traditional IRAs or 401ks, et cetera, that's how that works. How about tax-free accounts like Roth IRAs, for example? Right. And so we can talk about these as well. And those would also apply to Roth 401ks that are available for Roth 403b. So not every employer offers them, but we're starting to see more and more companies. And what happens with that is the money goes in, it's after-tax money though. So you're not getting a deduction on your income that year, but the money does go in and then it grows tax-free, tracks deferred just like it did in the other one that we just talked about, like an IRA. However, you're not required to take that money out. There are certain restrictions. You have to hold the account for a certain time, but once you reach a certain age, you're able to take that money out tax-free. Or if you don't need the money, you can leave it in there and let it continue to grow tax-free. So you're in control of that money. The government's not going to tax that money again if it's done properly. We're talking about tax consequences of different types of accounts. And uh, Mark Silverman, of course, Saving with Silverman is the name of our show. Uh, how about taxable accounts, after-tax brokerage accounts? Sure. So those are the type of accounts where... It'd be like your checking or savings account. If you have a brokerage account, you're buying some investments not related to your retirement that you're paying taxes on. So each year you have gains, losses, you know, um, long-term capital gains, whatever it might be, dividends and interest, you pay taxes on that. In fact, we have a way of managing money. The way that we help our clients is we can actually specify if an account is an IRA or if it's a taxable account like we just mentioned because those are taxed differently. And so we have a way of managing the money specifically if it's a taxable account to try to minimize the taxes, uh, which really makes a big difference in the long run. Too many advisors out there, especially people doing it themselves, manage the money the same, whether it's in an IRA or a taxable account. And that's really not a great idea, in my opinion. There's smarter ways to do it, and I'd be happy to discuss it if it's something that somebody wants to know more about how we okay. do that. Okay. How about uh, certificates of deposit? How, how do they figure in? Well, a CD, which uh, you know mo a lot of people are familiar with, those could be held in different accounts. You could hold those in an IRA. You could hold those in a Roth. You can hold those in a taxable account, and those typically will earn interest. So depending on what type of account it is, is how it's going to be taxed. CDs aren't as popular as they used to be because interest rates are so low. You know, we're talking at a 10-year treasury, which is less than 1% or a half of 1%, depending on the day. And so CDs aren't paying very much as long as, you know, money markets and savings ranks aren't paying very much either. But they do pay interest. And then at the end of maturity, you get your money back, your principal back. Okay. The last one on my list here is... Uh... Uh, as far as tax consequences are concerned, life insurance. So there's different types of life insurance, but the, the basic tax consequence is if, if life insurance is paid as a death benefit, meaning you have a life insurance policy and you die, not to be too grim, but if you die, um, the money that's paid out to your beneficiaries is totally tax free as long as it's paid as a death benefit. Mm. So if it's set up correctly, and that's, you know, that's one of the huge benefits of life insurance. It's a great way to pass money on to different generations. It also can, nowadays can be used for long-term care purposes. So life insurance does have a place. 
I believe in, in most people's situation, it just depends on the situation, what type of insurance you should have and how much. Those are all the sorts of things that we could sit down and have a discussion on as well. A lot of uh, folks listening to this might be interested to come in and have a conversation with you about uh, tax consequences. And uh, Mark, what kind of a conversation is that uh, going to take? What form will that conversation take? Yes. So you certainly reach out and Ronald, you'll provide the number, but you can give us a call, send us a text, whatever it might be. We'll make sure to get you on the calendar. So you actually have a conversation with me and we'll answer any questions that you may have. If you want to learn more about our services, we can have that discussion and see where it goes from there. There's no cost or obligation, as Ronald mentioned, but you know, it's really the way to get the conversation started. And we, and we are talking about taxes, which I think is a very important thing right now. I think most people are in agreement that taxes are going up no matter what happens with all this money that's being spent. You know, taxes are going to go up. I think at some point we're going to see higher inflation. Uh, That's a whole nother discussion. But you need to make sure that you're doing everything that you can, that you're prepared. And if you haven't had these conversations with your advisor, um, I'm surprised how many people I've, I've spoken with over the last few months that haven't even had a conversation with their advisor. And I think that's really poor communication. And I, you know, I've said this before, but clients need us more now during uncertainty than they do when things are going well. So, you know, I think things will recover at some point, but we need to make sure that you're doing the best job that you can, given what's going on in the world today. You've been listening to the Saving with Silverman podcast. If you have any questions at all about your financial situation, please give Mark Silverman a call. Again, his number is 520-333-7601 or go online to savingwithsilverman.com. For Mark Silverman, I'm Ron Stutz. We'll see you next time on the Saving with Silverman podcast. The Saving with Silverman podcast is brought to you by Silverman and Associates Wealth Management, LLC, based in Tucson, Arizona. The show is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and everywhere you listen to shows. Subscribe to the show on your favorite app today and never miss an episode. Just search for Saving with Silverman to find us or visit savingwithsilverman.com to listen to past episodes, to contact Mark, and to learn more about how to make smarter decisions with your money. Did you know that Mark Silverman also has a radio show? Tune in to Saving with Silverman Saturdays and Sundays at 3 p.m. on AM 790 KNST. All matters discussed on this show are for informational purposes only. Opinions expressed are solely those of Silverman and Associates Wealth Management LLC and staff. All topics covered are believed to be from reliable sources. However, Silverman and Associates Wealth Management LLC makes no representation as to its accuracy or completeness. This show shall in no way be construed as a solicitation to sell securities or investment advisory services to residents of any state other than Arizona or where otherwise permitted. Topics should be discussed with your individual advisor prior to implementation. Fee-based financial planning and investment advisory services offered through Silverman and Associates Wealth Management LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Arizona. Insurance products and services are offered through Silverman and Associates, an affiliated company.